grateful that this neck of the journey has ended and uh, I'm about to tell you how it started actually I don't think I've ever related this part of my story to you ah uh, no I don't think so but I I started NCU in 2017 Ooh, it seems so long away but it it feels it feels like it was just the other day i started um ncu in 2017 i it was a wonderful experience to be honest i all right so before let's backtrack a little so before that i applied to ncu early application so i got through by december and i was in sixth form at the time and i was really trying to decide still who i wanted to be and what i wanted to be for the rest of my life and no pressure it's just the rest of your life uh i i had a hard time deciphering what i wanted because i had a hard time you know choosing between another person's people's voice and what people wanted and what i wanted and back then uh you know for jamaicans for a lot of us they're only the traditional professions that matter listen you're only the traditional um professions that matter to the previous generations such as doctor nurses policeman uh, and lawyer and anything else is null and void and not important and a lot of uh, I, as a baby I said I wanted to be a doctor <laughs> said I wanted to be a doctor when I was a child and when I went to I was still having that dream up until seventh grade I went to Mount Alvernia yay go Alve! and in eighth grade I realized when we touched a little bit of chemistry and physics I realized it was maths a higher form like it, it was maths intermingled and I realized it wasn't gonna work out because me, me, this girl, Matt's, me and Matt and a friend. So I realized that the doctor dream wasn't gonna work out. And I was like, mm, maybe I can settle for being a nurse. When I went into ninth grade and they did more going into chemistry past the periodic table and going into a little bit more, I, was, I realized, oh my gosh, this is definitely not for me. I'm not, I'm not going to, to enjoy the science fields. And you had to choose what you wanted. You had to choose what you wanted. Uh, so uh, this video will mainly tell you how I got to choose in social work. And hopefully we can have another conversation about, you know, my sojourn through NCU. And I remember in ninth grade that we were supposed to choose what we wanted to be and who we wanted to be and our subjects and most of them set up a certain way where they choose certain subjects for you they put it in a i don't know it's like you are doing a specific type of subject and you have to choose between the options like okay you want to do social studies or do you want to do business administration so it was it was hard for me uh, choosing what I wanted to be especially when I was told oh uh, they didn't understand like nobody in my family understood why I wanted I didn't want to go into the science field I got called some names <laughs> I was told I was an idiot for choosing anything besides sciences and I remember just growing going through the motions and I I actually said, okay, I can be a nurse. But when I went deeper into it, I realized I couldn't be a nurse. And I was like, okay, so the next um, traditional thing that I could do, I can't be a policeman or a policewoman. I'm not equipped or made for that type of work, I don't think. Uh, so the next choice is teacher. So I was like, okay, I can be a teacher. I can do that. I can do that. And I realized that with my temper, that would be very hard to do. And I said, okay, I don't have to teach little kids. I can be a lecturer. And then I realized that you need a master's to become a lecturer. So what would I do until then? And uh, some new 
a new profession caught my eye. Some of my friends were telling me about how they wanted to be a psychologist because a psychologist, you know, studies uh, people's minds. And it fascinate, fascinated me so much. I started reading books on it. I started researching it. I was like, yes, I want to be a psychologist. I want to be a psychologist so bad. And uh, I actually in ninth grade i actually filled out the, the science version because i wanted the science subjects i chose the science subjects because of, because i wanted to please my family and after a lot of arguments uh i they finally caved my mom finally caved she became supportive of my journey not to go in the sciences my brother was still upset but with no business we don't care <laughs> she she found a cage and she she threw her support my way and so i was able to get another farm and sign up and she was able to sign on i did straight arts in high school i did literature i did history i did uh social studies i i was pretty good at it i found my passion i found my drive and even when my teachers were telling me you know you're not good enough you're not bright enough to pass these subjects you're not you're not gonna get your ones and i actually came out with a lot of ones a lot of straight a's and you know that gave me a little bit more confidence but to be truthful i still did not know what i wanted to be and who i wanted to become and so at the end of 11th grade i I didn't choose the university. I didn't sign up for any university. I just went straight into sixth form because I was still confused as to who I wanted to be. So um, I chose psychologist and I realized that I cannot be a psychologist until my master's. I'm still going to be a psychologist. But I fell in love with social work because it's much more active. It's much more about going out there and actually getting the resources to help your clients rather than um, sitting in an office and trying to work your way around their minds. It's much more about helping them on a physiological level. And that means like getting their needs, their basic needs, food, shelter, clothing, water. And it was exciting for me. Uh, and then I realized I needed the field experience before I went and, you know, went into the office and maybe uh, sit down. I don't think I'll ever stay one place in the office, but I definitely will, will, will pursue uh, my master's in psychology. <laughs> but before we get there, I, I decided I don't want to be a social worker, but that wasn't a traditional profession. Nobody understood it what was a social worker nobody understood that and so i i went into sixth form i went to sixth form to figure out what i wanted to become and when I, while i was at sixth form it was okay do you want to do law or do you want to do social work do you want to do law because law was a traditional profession everybody understood that they could boast about uh their family member being a lawyer and whatever but nobody knows what social work is and i remember going into sixth form and going and 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 saying god i don't know what i want to become and i came out with that same level of uncertainty and you would think i would come out with more firmness but i i just left it up to god i said god hey hey god so I don't know what I want to do for the rest of my life, but it's your will. So I'm going to apply for two universities and I'm going to apply for law. I'm going to apply for social work. And when I got through to NCU, the joy I felt in actually being able to, to go and do what I love. Oh my gosh, it was, I was so happy. And there was nobody else being happy for me, but I was happy because I I got to go and believe it or not, NC was the, the dream school for me. I'll explain why a little bit later. But it was a dream school for me and I got to do the thing that I want to do. And as for law, I, I decided that I was interested in, in pursuing it. And I didn't get a letter, but I think they had it on some 
something because my CSET results had not yet, my CAPE results had not yet come through. And it brought me back to the fact that, uh, you know, a lot of times you have your success and people don't understand it. But once it makes you happy, that's what counts because at the end of the day, we were all made with a choice. God, God made us with choices. And if it is that you choose to live a particular way, if you choose to live a particular way now, this choice you make right now will impact you for the rest of your life. Your choices that you make today will impact your tomorrow. And I know a lot of persons oftentimes say that, you know, the 20s or when you're in the teens, it's time for fun, it's time for chill, it's time for just to, to broth and party. But I see it as, okay, so you want house and land and care when you're 30, in your 30s, right? But what are you doing in your 20s to actually achieve that? Are you going to school? Are you getting a trade? Are you getting... Whatever decision you make today, you're going to have to live with the rest of your life. Ensure that at the end of it, when you get to that point in your life, you're completely okay with that decision because nobody has made you choose it. So I know a lot of persons, I've seen a lot of persons, they don't choose what they want to do. They... I've seen plenty of my, of my colleagues in high school, they chose the sciences because of the pressure. I remember going on the road and people just saying to me like, what are you doing at school? I said, oh, I'm doing history and literature and the arts. And I said, art as in art as in painting? I said, no, the arts. And they said, oh, I think you did bright. You should have did the sciences. My sister did the sciences. And I felt so bad. But you know what I did? When everybody asks me what I'm doing at school, I say liberal arts. And they don't know what that is. So I just say liberal arts and I walk away. Because people fear what they don't understand. And I'm pretty happy. I'm pretty sure that if I chose the sciences, I would not be where I am today. Would I lose three screw the guan. And I'm completely happy with the turn I've taken in my life to choose what makes me happy and what, what my success is. So, I remember um, late 2017 when I left, I left um, sixth form, right? I left sixth form and I was... Going into university that year, I was so excited because I was leaving home. I wanted to do it for such a long time. But yeah, I've, I wanted to leave home for a while and I was leaving home. I was going out there to be my own woman and I was going to study the thing I loved. And it was exciting for me. It was, I was elated. I was, ugh, I, I thought I had it all. And... I was worried about how I would get there though. I started working at the call center like everybody else. I started working at the call center as soon as I left school. And because I'm Adventist, I could not find a good call center job. I, I went to some very well paid call center centers and I was told in the interview, we cannot employ you because you're Adventist. We need somebody who can work on Saturdays. And I got that from every, almost every um, call center that I got through with. And the lowest pain one actually took me on. And uh, they had an account for Adventists, which I was grateful for. I still had to fight my way to get my Saturdays, but I was grateful for it. But the fact that it was very low pain, I could not save for university. And here's the thing, a lot of times persons say, hey, I'm saving for university, blah, 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 whatever, whatever. And I'm like, you know, university is a couple million dollars, right? Like three, two, two point five million dollars. How is it that you're going to save two million dollars and never touch it? 
so my advice to you is take the first step now start now start now don't 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 save and say oh me go save you know you cannot save two million dollars put down and not touch it me they tell you that i'm me very good pan saving so i i wanted to save until uh, uh, for university at the time you know my mom said you know you're gonna have to to maybe work continue working before you go to university because i'm i having a really down year and i don't think i can send you ayana and i was so so disappointed that i could not and uh, i remember praying to god and saying god <laughs> But I want to go to university. I know it's my niche. I've never belonged anywhere. And I know this is where I belong. I want to go. I want to go. I really do. And if you send me, I'll fix my life together. My life was a mess at that time, by the way. I was a complete mess. I was saying, I'm, I'm going to put myself together. And if you send me, I just go, go. I'm gonna go. I'm gonna go. If it's ten dollars in my pocket, just give me a sign. I'll go. And I remember one day I was putting my my bag into the locker for work because usually at call center you have to put up your bag, you have to put up your phone and everything. Can't go on the floor with it. And uh, at, a message came in my email, and I realized that it was a email from Hanover Charities. See, I had received a scholarship. Praise God. This is me. Praise God. Me happy so till me glad back. Me glad back boss. Me no no me no no me no no. Like I was so happy. Me it's so joyous. Me just me just feel like me would have jump up in high people in my workplace. Somebody feel like I was so happy. I was beyond happy. And here is the work of the enemy. The minute I said that, okay, God. You're, you're doing such a great job for me. I got one scholarship. I realized that, okay, so this is not going to pay tuition, miss. So where are you going to get the rest of the money? And, uh, and I went on until I got a call from NCB one day. I was at work and my grandma told me that NCB calls. Well, happy now can me apply for scholarship. This was a scholarship that... I thought I would never get because when you're in a high school, you know it's only like the cream, the cream of the crop, the creme de la creme. Those were the only persons that would get such scholarships. Those, that's the basic. Because you know when you when you when you don't get 90 and over, I was never the student that got 90 and over average. You feel you are nobody. I got the ncb scholarship i got shortlisted for my parish and then i won the ncb scholarship and i was beyond happy like i felt it wasn't just money it was just that it wasn't just deliverance for the year it was that i felt worth it i felt worth it i felt like oh my gosh god god God, God, you're great, you're good, you're good, me no know, me no know, me no know. I, I didn't even think it was possible. And NCB opened up, it was just about, you know, Hanover Charities gave me that hope, but NCB ho opened so much doors for me in terms of the public, how public they were with their recipients. I, for the first time, it was the first time actually but i was featured on the susan show i remember being so excited i mean this little country girl from mount peace being featured on the susan show and i remember when i started ncu susan came to ncu she was in the library with me and that stayed with me throughout my tenure at ncu people saying hey i did see you on tv and I'm proud of you. Just strangers walking up to me and say, Oh, you represented Hanover well. Listen to the pride I felt. 
on being chosen and knowing that God came through for me in that way. After that, I knew that anything was possible. Like my 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 motto, my philosophy in life is that with man it is impossible, with God all things are are possible. I know that nothing is impossible with him. I felt that deep sense of pride in myself like, "Hey, you country girl, the girl that people tell tell us say you lose a school, the girl that get 30 pan our pan pan our pan our history paper that's you that's you boo you're on tv that's you that's you it was for me that pro moment that pulled me through ncu to become the butterfly that i was and i'm gonna tell you how i opened up during my tenure at ncu